Section 8.3, Algebraic Solutions to Trigonometric Equations. Our objective is to solve trigonometric equations algebraically. Now, in Section 8.1, we solved trig equations using our graphing calculator. So now we're going to algebraically do this, and we can use our graphing calculator to help our check our answers. So when we're solving these trig equations, notice that um, the original equation does not have an inverse in it. So that means that there are many possibilities that we can have when solving these equations. So this table just kind of gives us a little helping hand in when we're solving the equations and what we should do to find the solutions. So if we look at the sign of x is equal to some number, and we're going to call that value c. If I wanted to figure out what my solutions are going to be for when the sign of x is equal to this value of c, we can do a couple of different things. So remember right here we have our sign graph. If I have values of c that are in between negative 1 and 1, notice that um, like here, if my answers were the positive C values, then I would have two solutions in between 1 and negative 1. If it's negative answers, I also am going to have two solutions. So to find those two solutions, we are going to use our inverse on our calculator. So we know we can do x would be equal to the sine inverse of C. And then remember that um, we have multiple answers that we can have because this graph is going to keep on repeating itself. So plus the period of the function to pi n. We're not done, though, because we also have a, another solution for which we can get these values. So the question is, how do we get the other solutions that we have? Well, there was an identity that we didn't really memorize, but it's the sine of x is equal to um, the sine of x, or excuse me, pi minus x. This is the identity that we're going to use in order to help us find the other solutions. So if you think about it, if I have my unit circle values, let's say we our value of x is pi over 4. So then if my sine values are positive, then the other value that's going to give me a same solution would be over here to get that um, root 2 over 2 is if, if that's what we were solving. So then over here, notice that if I do pi minus pi over 4, I get 3 pi over 4, and we know that because it's on my unit circle, and so that would give me my other value where, and if this was the equation, the sine of x is equal to root 2 over 2. So let's say we we're solving that equation, so then that's where we got the pi over 4, and then 3 pi over 4 plus 2 pi n, where n is integer. So that would help us find all of our solutions. So to find the second solution, which I'm going to call x2, so this is x1, x2, we do pi minus the sine inverse of c plus 2 pi n. Now, when we're equal to a c value of 1 or negative 1, so if I have the sine of x is equal to 1, or if it was negative 1, notice that 1 only has one solution because it only hits once on my graph. So we know from our unit circle that this would be x is equal to pi over 2 plus 2 pi n. If it's negative 1, then x would be equal to 3 pi over 2, or instead of saying 3 pi over 2, we can also use negative pi over 2. So um, in this case, negative pi over 2 plus 2 pi n is what I'm going to use. And again, you can use 3 pi over 2. It doesn't really matter. So then um, for the next one, if it's above 1 or negative 1, we'll notice above 1, you would not have anything on your graph, and below negative 1, there would be nothing on my graph because it's a unit circle. So in this case, there would be no solutions. So then let's go ahead and do where the cosine values are equal to c. So if c values in between 1 or negative 1, we're going to now have two solutions. So I know one of my solutions, x equals the cosine inverse of c, and then plus the period to pi n. But how do we get the other solution? Well, remember that our graph also continues backwards. And so if I were to find some solution here, it would also be the same solution there on my graph. Since we're going backwards, if I, let's say, wanted a value of where the cosine of x is equal to a half, um, so then it, I could do this value would be the same as this one plus my period of my function. So if you recall, on your unit circle, where do I have an positive values for um, x? It would be on the right side of my unit circle. So 
I can do this value and this value are going to be the same. And notice that I can just do the negative answer for that. So, if, And that's because of the negative angle identity. So the cosine of negative x is equal to the cosine of that angle. So by that property, x would be equal to the negative cosine inverse of c plus 2 pi n. When c is equal to 1, then note, remember that our solution start at 0, so x would be equal to 0 plus 2 pi n, or you can just write that as 2 pi n. For negative 1, our solutions would be x is equal to pi plus 2 pi n, and then no solutions. And for the tangent graph, remember that this is my x and y axes, my graph looks like this. So remember, we only have one solution anytime we are solving for c. So in this case, the only solution we have is tan um, x is equal to tangent inverse of that c value that we're trying to find. Uh, or not, the c value is what we're given. We're trying to find the x. So plus the period of my function, which in this case, remember, for tangent, it's different. It's just pi. So that's kind of nice um, overall picture of how we solve these equations. So let's go ahead and start to solve some. So for this first part, we, it says solve each equation, round your answers with four decimal place. So we have the cosine of x is equal to 0.6. So graphically, if you think about this, um, 0.6 would be somewhere in here on my graph. And so again, we know that we're going to hit here and here. So two answers um, for, for one length of my period of my graph. So in order to find the answers, our first answer is x is equal to the cosine inverse of 0.6. And if we do this on our calculator, you can just punch it in and you get your first answer. So x1 is equal to 0.9273 plus 2 pi n. So that would give me my first solution. So the second solution, instead of trying to figure out what this answer is over here, if I go backwards on my graph, this solution right here corresponds to this solution. And notice that it's the negative angle. So all we have to do is just do x2 would be equal to the negative of this answer. So cosine's nice that we don't have to really do much. You can just write plus or minus your answer plus the period of the function. So these are my cosine solutions. Now for sine, if I have um, the sine of x is equal to negative 0.075 and I want to find the solutions, for this one, um, negative 0.75 would be somewhere down here. So notice that it would hit here and here on my graph. So I have again two answers and I know that because it's in between um, negative 1 and 1. So my values are going to be x is equal to the sine inverse of negative 0.75. And when I do this in my calculator, I get my first solution, x1, is equal to negative 0.8481 plus 2 pi n. And then for my second solution, remember we talked about um, that pi minus our answer gives us the second solution. So now if I do x2, this would be equal to pi minus the sine inverse of negative 0.75. And so on my calculator, I would actually type that in. And when I do, I get x2 is equal to 3.9897 plus 2 pi n. So this would be my two solutions. And again, notice it's different from the inverse trig equations that we were solving because those we were evaluating. And we only had one answer when we had a sine inverse in our equation. Now we're solving for multiple angles that we can have where the sine of x is equal to negative 0.75. So for the tangent, this one's nice because I know that tangent's only going to want to have one answer. So this would be the x equals the tangent inverse of negative 4 plus pi k or pi n. So then for this one, when you plug it into your calculator, and I forgot to mention make sure you're in radian mode when you're doing these problems. So in this case, we would get x is equal to negative 1.3258 plus pi n, and that would be my only solution. 
So I want to go back to the first um, problem that we had, cosine x equals 0.6. So just remember when we did this before, we set it equal to 0 and plugged it into our calculator. And remember we said we know the period of this function because my b value is 1 would be 2 pi over 1, which is 2 pi. So my window we changed from 0 to 2 pi and we looked at the graph. So again, here are my solutions that I have. And even just to show you, if I do second trace value, I'm going to do the cosine inverse of um, 0.6. And notice that that will give me my first zero that I had right there. And instead of finding this zero on my graph, we did the plus or minus. But even to show you, I'm going to change my window to negative pi and hit graph just to get a bigger window. So remember our answers are just repeating. So this answer here I know is going to be the same as this solution that we have right there. So they're going to be the same. And even just to show you, I'm going to do the value second trace. And I'm going to do value, so the cosine inverse, so negative cosine inverse of 0.6. So if I do that, notice that I get this value in my calculator. And if I add the period, which is 2 pi. So if I add plus 2 pi, you'll notice that I'm going to get this solution over here. So it gives us the same answers from when we did it graphically. Again, it's just a different way of finding the solutions. And so the reason that we add the period of the function is because remember that these solutions um, are going to keep on repeating with our coterminal angle, so plus 2 pi n or minus 2 pi n, depending where you are. So before, we were only looking at the length of the period, so that way we didn't repeat our answers. So um, now we're just algebraically using the cosine inverse. So again, you can use your calculator to help you check, um, but do make sure you know how to do this using um, using algebra. So let's go to the next problem. So we're just going to do a bunch of these. So for the first part, it says solving other trig equations examples. So we're going to solve x equals, or x times the cosine of x, 8 times the cosine of x minus 1 equals 0. In order to solve this equation that we have here, we're going to use some algebra. So I'm going to solve for the cosine of x. So if I solve for the cosine of x, I add the 1 divide by 8. So I get the cosine of x is equal to 1 8. So if I want to find my solutions, I know that x is going to be equal to, because it's in between 0 or in between negative 1 and 1, I know it's going to be plus or minus the cosine inverse of 1 8 plus my period of my function, which I know is 2 pi n. So in this case, I know that x on my calculator, when I do this, is going to be equal to plus or minus, because that's going to be my two solutions, and it ends up being 1.4455 plus 2 pi n. And I suggest that you guys also plug these into your calculator as we're doing these so that you can check to make sure you're getting the same answers that we are getting. So these would be my two solutions, and of course I could check that using my graphing calculator. So for the next one, if we have something that we recognize, like I recognize this right here as being a value on my unit circle, if that happens, that means you want to get the exact value answer. Unlike when we had 1 eighth, I know that wasn't on my unit circle, and that's why I can use my calculator. So for this one, I have the sine of u is equal to root 2 over 2. So I'm trying to figure out what angles give me root 2 over 2. So you can think about your graph, or you can think about your unit circle, or you can even make a triangle if you like. So um, for this, I know that root 2 over 2, the sine is positive. And where do we get positive sine values in quadrant 1 or quadrant 2? So right here, I would have one answer. And I know that that is actually at pi over 4, so then the other answer over here to get root 2 over 2 would be equal to 3 pi over 4 because it's pi minus your answer, so pi minus pi over 4 is 3 pi over 4 on my unit circle. Or again, you can think about your graph, so however you like to do that. So I know that u is equal to the sine inverse of root 2 over 2, so we know that u would be equal to pi over 4 plus 2 pi and, and the second answer is going to be equal to pi minus that, which we know from our unit circle is just 3 pi over 4 plus 
to pi n. So again, anytime you have something that's on your unit circle, make sure you find the exact values of it. And if you wanted to, you could also think about making a triangle and then trying to figure out what kind of triangle we're working with. This would be a 45, 45, 90 triangle, and then solving to find your solutions. So let's go to the next one. For the next one, we can use substitution. So this one's a little bit different because we have the sine of 4x in our equation. So if I have the sine of 4 times my angle in my equation, well, that's going to be difficult to solve. So I need to use substitution to get it so that it's not the sine of 4x. I'm going to say, let u equal 4x. And I'm going to solve the sine of u is equal to root 3 over 2. And again, I recognize this from being on my unit circle. So if I have the sine of u is equal to root 2 over 2, well then I know that u is equal to the sine inverse of root 3 over 2. And so if I think about my unit circle, where do I get sine values that are going to be equal to root 2 over 2? or root 3 over 2, excuse me. So root 3 over 2 I know is going to be up here, and I know right here because it's positive, so it's in quadrant 1 and quadrant 2. So in this case, I get u is equal to pi over 3 plus 2 pi n. And my second answer is pi minus that. So I know that pi minus pi over 3, we need a common denominator, so this would be 3 pi over 3 minus pi over 3, which is where we get 2 pi over 3, and we should have already known that because it's on our unit circle, so 2 pi over 3 plus 2 pi n. Well, these aren't my answers. Why are these not my answers? Because I let u equal 4x in the beginning, so that means that I need to take out this u that we have right here, and I need to put back in what I substituted out. So I need to replace this with 4x, and then I need to solve for x. So how do I solve for x? It's like dividing by 4, so if I divide everything by 4, it's really like multiplying everything by 1 fourth. So if I have pi over 3, times 1 fourth, I get pi over 12. So I know that in this case, x is going to be equal to pi over 12 plus 2 divided by 4 is 1 half. So that would be pi over 2n. And this solution right here, when I divide everything by 4, so each term has to be divided by 4. So 2 pi over th um, 3 divided by 4 is the same thing as 2 pi, whoops, 2 pi over 3 times 1 fourth. So that would be 2 pi over 12, which is pi over 6. So x is equal to pi over 6 plus um, 1 half pi, which becomes pi over 2n. So these would be all of my solutions that I have for these two equations. Now, you can even go back to the beginning. Remember when we were doing this graphically? Graphically, we said we had to find the period of the function. So I'm going to check. My period, in, um, according to this, is pi, it should be pi over 2. So my b value in the equation is 4. So how do you find the period? You take your parent graph period, which is 2 pi, divided by your b value. So 2 pi divided by 4 is pi over 2. So that makes sense that my answers, I'm adding pi over 2. And if I even just do what we did in section 8.1, to graphically look at this. So I plugged it into my y equals, and then I'm going to go to my window. And remember, before we graphed it from 0 to the length of our period, which in this case is pi divided by, whoops, pi over n, pi divided by 2. And I know my key points are going to go in divide that by 4, so pi over 2 divided by 4, multiplied by 4 is pi over 8 for my key points. Remember, you divide your period in four equal parts, and if I hit graph, I have one, two solutions. So those solutions should be pi over um, 12, which gives me my first answer, and I know the next one should be then pi over 6, just to check.
I notice I get pi over 6. If I were to um, make the length of this window larger, um, maybe do two cycles instead of one cycle, if I add pi n to each of them, then I know I'm going to get multiple answers. So um, if I change my window instead to pi, because pi over 2 plus pi over 2 would be pi, and hit graph, notice I would have two cycles now. So then for this, if I do, just to show you, second trace value, I have um, pi divided by 12, which was my first answer. And if I add my period, which is pi divided by 2 to this and hit enter, notice that gives me my second zero. So this one, the next one would be here, and that's why we have to add the period of the function. So that would give me second answer. So pi over 6 plus pi over 2 would give me this for the next answer. So that's why we have multiple places where we can be equal to these. And so these would be my solutions that I have. So then the next one, we have solve 3 sine squared x minus sine squared x minus 2 on the interval from negative pi to pi. So now it's specifically telling us we want specific answers. I don't want all of my answers. I only want answers on this interval. So you have to be very careful for when it says things like that. So for this one, I am going to, um, when I look at this, if I have 3 sine squared x minus sine x minus 2, this tells me I can probably factor that. So I'm going to check. So I'm going to let u equal the sine of x to make this easier. So I have 3u squared minus u minus 2 equals 0. So if I have this, I recognize that I can factor this equation. So this factors into 3u. I know this is going to be u. And so then I have to think of my factors. So 3u plus 2 and u minus 1 is going to be equal to 0. So then remember, when you solve these, we did this in algebra. We get 3u plus 2 equals 0 and u minus 1 equals 0. So here, you would get u is equal to negative 2 thirds and u is equal to 1. So then now if I use my substitution, I have to substitute sine of x back in for u. So sine x equals negative 2 thirds and sine x equals 1. So in order to solve these, I have to use my sine inverse. So I know that x is equal to the sine inverse of negative 2 thirds. But remember, we have two answers. We also have to do x is equal to pi minus sine inverse of negative 2 thirds because remember this value that we have right here we called it c earlier in the table since it's in between negative 1 and 1 we have two answers now this one since it's equal to 1 we only have one solution and I know this is on my unit circle so on my unit circle where is the sine of x equal to the value of 1 at pi over 2 plus 2 pi n so I have this solution now I need to find these two. Since these two are not on my unit circle, I can use my calculator. So I'm going to call this x1 and x2. So x1, if you plug sine inverse of negative 2 thirds into your calculator, you get negative point, um, 7297. And then x2 would be equal to, um, let's see, we get 3.8713. And remember, this to find all of the angles, you usually add the period of the function. Now, the problem is, again, that we only want the solutions from negative pi to pi. Well, pi over 2 fits. So from so these would be all of the solutions, but we don't want those. We only want the solutions from negative pi to um, pi. So to make sure I have all my solutions, if I look here, well, negative 0.7297, I know that um, we would be okay with that solution there. So I'm going to look at my calculator to kind of help me do this. So in my calculator, just to kind of help, so I plugged into my y equals. On my window, I'm going to look at negative pi to positive pi and then hit graph to see how many solutions I should have. So one, two, three. So this one right here is probably my um, one of my solutions. So let me pause. So right here we have pi over 2. 
And then if I do second value, and let's do negative, um, so let's do the sine inverse of negative two-thirds. And that gives me this value right here. So I know this one is the pi over 2 answer. This one is the negative 0.7297. Well, what about the other answer we found? Remember, it was x equals 3.8713. Well, the problem with this is notice that well, pi is 3.14, so this is too large. So if it's plus 2 pi n, we can do minus 2 pi, and that should give me this solution right here. So let's even check that. So if I do second um, trace value, we're going to do the sine inverse of um, negative 2 thirds, and I'm going to subtract the period of my function so that it's on the correct interval and notice when I oops when I did something wrong okay so for some reason it wouldn't let me do the sine inverse but if I plug in the actual 3.8713 and subtract 2 pi notice that that gives me this answer which is coterminal with this answer here so this one is on the interval from negative pi to pi so this is what I would use for my solutions instead of 3.8713 so over here I know that my solutions are going to be x is equal to pi over 2 um, and negative 0.7297, and then the last one, I need to get it back up so I can see, was negative 2.4119. And so from zero, from negative pi to two to pi, these would be my solutions that I would have. If it asked me to find all of the solutions, then I would use these two answers. But again, if I only want it on a specific interval, I have to be very careful. And again, this one was not on the interval from negative pi um, to pi. So I had to subtract 2 pi from the answer to get this right here in order to, for it to be on that specific interval. All right, so let's go to the next question. Um, for the next question here, we have solve the cosine of x equals sine squared x equal um, times sine squared x equals cosine x. For this problem here, you don't want to divide out your cosine. The reason you don't want to divide when you're doing these trig ex um, problems when you're solving is because then you introduce um, problems where you can't divide by zero, and also you could also miss solutions. So when you're doing these problems, please do not divide them out, but you can add or subtract and make it equal to zero is what I would do. So in this case, I'm going to do the cosine of x times the sine of squared of x minus the cosine of x equals zero. That's the first step. So again, I can use algebra and factor out a cosine of x. And the reason I did that is because I got my sine by itself and cosine by itself. So the next step would be to do cosine x equals zero and sine squared x uh, minus 1 equals 0, so sine squared x equals um, 1. Both of these are on my unit circle, so I can find the exact value. So since um, cosine of x equals 0 is um, on my unit circle, I know that x is equal to the plus or minus cosine inverse of 0. So where what angle gives me 0 on the unit circle for cosine? I know that it's going to be at pi over 2, or we could do negative pi over 2, so x would be equal to plus or minus pi over 2 plus 2 pi n. And then for sine, where is the sine of x squared of x equal to 1? Well, I have a sine squared there, so first I have to get rid of that squared. So in order to get something um, rid of something that's squared, you take the square root of both sides, so I would get the sine of x is equal to plus or minus the square root of 1, which is just 1. So now I have two more equations. I have the sine of x equals 1, and the sine of x is equal to negative 1 that I have to solve. So where do I get sine values of 1? Well, when x is equal to um, a value of pi over 2 plus 2 pi n, and when x is equal to um, negative pi over 2, or you could use 3 pi over 2 if you wanted to, it doesn't really matter, pi over 2 plus 2 pi n. So for these solutions, I would notice something right away that if I have plus or minus my value on my unit circle, notice that 
all of these answers can be simplified because I'm hitting every single here to up here and I'm keeping going on my unit circle so I'm hitting every single pi on my unit circle so I can simplify this into x is equal to just um, pi over 2 plus pi n, so that takes care of all of my solutions. Um, so if you can simplify it, I would suggest doing that. And I know that I knew that the cosine of zero could be simplified. So because of that, pi over two plus pi n would give me all of my solutions on my unit circle, because pi over two plus pi would give me three pi over two, which would be down here. And then I could add another pi over two, which give me up here. And then I would keep on going on my unit circle. So simplified, these would be my solutions. Okay, so then let's do one last problem. So for this problem over here, notice I have negative 6 sine squared x plus cosine x plus 5. For these types of problems here, we can do um, substitution as well, but notice I have a sine squared and a cosine. So there's nothing that I can factor out to do this problem. What would be the easiest is to use your identity. So we can actually substitute in one of my Pythagorean identities. Remember we said that the cosine squared of x is equal to um, 1 minus sine squared x and also sine squared x is equal to 1 minus cosine squared x by the Pythagorean identity sine squared x plus cosine squared x equals 1. So what I'm going to do for this problem is I'm going to use this identity right here so that I can have everything in terms of cosine. So I have negative 6 times 1 minus cosine squared x plus cosine x plus 5 equals 0. So I'm going to distribute the negative 6. So negative 6 plus 6 cosine squared x plus cosine x plus 5 equals 0. Combine like terms. So 6 cosine squared x plus cosine x minus 1 equals 0. And then I'm going to use substitution because I can factor this problem. So I'm going to say let u equal the cosine of x. So if I do that, I get 6u plus um, u, so the 6u squared, sorry, plus u minus 1 equals 0. And I know that this factors, this factors into 3u minus 1 and 2u um, plus 1. So then I can now do u is equal to 1 third or u is equal to negative um, 1 half. Now for these problems, let's say you forgot how to factor this. Even if you forgot how to factor, you can use the quadratic formula to do this as well. So just to show you, I can use a quadratic formula. I would get u is equal to my b value is 1, so negative 1 plus or minus the square root of 1 squared, which is just 1, minus 4 times um, a, which is 6 times C, all over 2 times A, which is 2 times 6. So if I simplify this, U is equal to negative 1 plus or minus the square root of 25 over 12, which is equal to negative 1 plus or minus 5 over 12, which means that U would be equal to, if I do negative 1 plus 5 divided by 12 and negative 1 minus 5 divided by 12, notice I would get 1 third or negative one half, which is the same as what I got when I when I did factoring. So again, even if you forget how to factor, use a quadratic formula to find your solutions. Now the last step that we would have to do is substitute my cosine of x back in. So for this one, I get the cosine of x is equal to one third. So to find my solutions, I do x is equal to plus or minus the cosine inverse of one third plus two pi n. So when I do this on my calculator, because it's not on my unit circle, I get x is equal to plus or minus 1.2310 plus two pi n. And then I'm not done because remember I still have to do this solution up here. So I get the cosine of x is equal to negative one half. That is a value on my unit circle. Since it is a value in my unit circle, I can use my unit circle in order to help me. I know I would be in, in the um, second quadrant or the third quadrant to get a negative x value for cosine, because remember cosine is your x, sine is your y. So if I want negative a half, I would be up here. So I know that's going to be at 2 pi over 3. So in this case, x would be equal to, um, and I can do plus or minus that answer, so plus or minus 2 pi over 3 
plus 2 pi n. And if you don't want to write plus or minus your answer, if you actually want to find the other cosine value that we have on our unit circle, where I have um, the cosine of x equal negative 1 half. So if you wanted to use 4 pi over 3 plus 2 pi n and 2 pi over 3 plus 2 pi n, that's okay. Um, it, they're still correct. So either way, I just find it easier to do the plus or minus for cosine since that's what we had. If it was sine, remember we'd be do pi minus our answer. So these are our solutions to this equation. So we can use factoring and algebra. We can use our identities to help us. Um, and again, just make sure you don't divide out by your um, trigonometric functions because then it introduces extraneous solutions and you might miss solutions. So just to go back to the beginning, so this is kind of a table which helps us find our solutions. So remember, if you're in between negative 1 and 1, you have two solutions for sine, one's the sine inverse, one's pi minus the sine inverse plus your period of the function. Um, when it's equal to 1 or negative 1, you have one solution, and above 1 or negative 1, no solutions. Cosine, two answers, plus or minus your cosine inverse plus your period of your function. Um, 1 and negative 1 have one solution, and tangent always has one solution plus pi n. So make sure you bring this with you to class. I know we didn't do that last problem, number 8, so if you wanted to try that last problem, you could. I think the answer or solution to that might be in the book.